G'day guys, it's JB with JB Adventures and Family. A little bit of a different video for you today, guys. So ever since we started Van Life, guys, we've been inundated with a bunch of questions from family, other travelers, people we meet on the road, people that see us filming. They've been asking us why we started Van Life, how we do it with a dog and a baby. So we just figured we'd answer some of those questions for you today in this video. So if you like the content of the videos that we're putting out and the videos that we're doing at the moment, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button. And without further ado, let's just get into this video. I guess one of the main couple of reasons we started van life was the freedom of adventure, uh, the lifestyle of van life itself, and I think the main reason everyone that we meet that's out on the road, that is taken to a life on the road, does it because of travel. We wanted to travel. So travel is something that we both always wanted to do. We had a heap of trips planned over to America, Egypt, Thailand, a lot of overseas travel and stuff like that was always something that we wanted to do. And the list of destinations was pretty much endless. And then COVID hit and overseas travel was a no-go. Uh, Mia was also born in July last year, just after COVID initially hit. So we both worked in retail and once COVID hit, we basically both became stay-at-home parents at that point in time. Uh, this opened up the time side of it for us to travel really well and COVID closed that door really quickly. Um, but when a door closes, a window opens apparently. Um, so we sort of looked at it and try to make a positive out of a negative really and thought well we'll go travel Australia and that's basically what we did a couple of weeks after me was born and she had her um, first immunizations and shots like that we went out to the middle of Australia and started traveling Queensland uh, there was a couple of states still that you couldn't go to so we stuck between Queensland for most of it and a little bit of the Northern Territory and went out to the Simpson Desert and did a two-week holiday out there and that's pretty much where all this began um, we found a lot of small country towns and a lot of places that are on the way to big destinations in Australia that I think a lot of people skip past and that's what we made this channel about was showing people these places that you don't usually get to see so travel was something that we wanted to do um, and once we did a little bit of it holiday wise and once we figured out that Mia was enjoying it we thought why not do it full time before we started the channel we did a little bit of travel in Australia we went out to the Simpson Desert explored a little bit of Queensland and just did a couple of holidays here and there and that's what started it off for us basically that, that travel bug hit us pretty hard and we just became inspired by some of the things that are out there in this country and close to home and we thought why not do it in house and travel Australia and that's what made this channel come alive and made us want to do this was because we're seeing things out there that we didn't know were out there we're seeing some awesome locations some beautiful places and everywhere we go is dog friendly and free camping. So, I mean, if fuel didn't cost as much as fuel costs, this wouldn't cost us hardly anything to do. Um, which is why your subscription is such a big thing for us and we 100% appreciate all the support that we're getting. We wanna try and push this channel to a bigger platform. Um, our goal for the channel basically is to try and get it to the stage where YouTube becomes our main source of income. Everything we're doing at the moment is a little bit altered. If we were just traveling Australia in general and doing this sorts of stuff, it would be a lot easier. I think filming these videos is something that we really love doing, but it's definitely a double-edged sword because it puts us in location a lot longer than we'd usually be in the location for. Because we've got to film it, edit it, and then find somewhere that has internet reception so that we can upload it and get it out to you guys. Um, so if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, it helps us out a lot, and it keeps us out here on the road doing exactly what we love to do. Hey, Bob City. Anyway, that, that side of it aside, um, the lifestyle and adventure side of it is just insane. The people that you meet out on the road, we've all got the same thing in common. We all love traveling Australia. We all love living mildly off grid to wildly off grid. And the freedom that you get with it is just unexplainable. Unless you get out there and do it yourself, it's just really hard to put it into words. But taking the stress of the nine to five job away, and being your own boss and being on your own time schedule is just so enjoyable. It's, it's funny when people ask me why we started Van Life, it's kind of hard to talk about it without talking about YouTube. Um, van Life definitely started outside of YouTube for us. It was definitely something we decided to do before we 
brought it to the channel and started doing the YouTube side of things. But YouTube's given us the ability to be able to show people what's out there and how easy it is to do it. Um, you know, one of the things we pride ourselves on in the channel is showing people that they can do this stuff with the dog, with the baby, on the cheap. We free camp 95% of the places we go to. 95% of the places we go to are dog friendly. We don't have an epic full drive that's got all this aftermarket stuff. We don't have an epic caravan with all the aftermarket stuff. If anything, we've probably got a little bit cheaper than what we should have. Um, but that's all stuff that we address when it happens. Getting out and exploring Australia or any country or any state or any location is definitely something that I recommend everybody does, whether it's for a holiday or full time like us. But I can't say enough good things about van life. So that, that's the main reasons I wanted to start van life. Personally, for me, I reckon I really just wanted to get out and explore the world. I haven't been many places at all, other than the east coast of Queensland. But either then, even that, I mean, I haven't been very far north, and I haven't been very far south or even west. So for me, it was more about exploring Australia, seeing what's really out there, finding hidden locations that is not even on the map, and broadcasting all this. And now we get the opportunity to share those same locations with you. All in all, why did we start van life? I guess to see beautiful locations, awesome destinations, whether they've been discovered or we discover them. I think it's just the thrill of going out there and finding it and exploring the country that we live in. So if our channel can get used to do anything, whether it's a weekend trip away, a couple of weeks over the school holidays, or taking it to the road like we did, you know? Uh, if this channel can give you anything, I hope it gets you out there exploring Australia to some extent and seeing these awesome places that we get to see. Um, and if not, if you're not able to do that for some reason or whatever, keep watching the channel because we've got a heap more places coming. Alrighty guys, so what you need to start van life? Apart from getting into the nitty gritty side of things like solar, power, and all those sorts of things, it really comes down to what suits you best. I mean, asking what you need to start van life is like asking how long a piece of string is. It's really dependent on how comfortable you want to be, how off grid you want to go. Um, obviously our setup, we opted for the caravan. Uh, that was basically a space thing and the, we wanted the ability to be able to go off-road and come back to a campsite already set up. Uh, so apart from figuring out what type of vehicle you want to use to jump onto the road and do van life, whether it's a caravan like us, um, a camper trailer, an RV or a van, it doesn't, it's, it's personal preference, it's up to you, it depends on what you want to do and how much space or room or comfort or mobility that you want to have. Obviously having a caravan was going to cost a little bit more as far as now you've got two registrations and insurance and stuff like that whereas if you just had a van or an RV or something like that you've just got the one and saying that the caravan's not that expensive to register and insurance is basically peanuts and so it didn't really bother us too much for the amount of capability that we get out of it um, so once you figure that out I think the biggest thing that you got to take into consideration when jumping onto the road full-time is going to be storage so whether or not that's food storage or water storage fuel clothes or accessories, storage was one of the main things that you need to consider if you're planning on living on the road. So water and fuel storage and why that's important. Um, water we use on a daily basis and we found that we use a lot more water than we thought we would initially. Water gets used for almost everything. We use it for dishes, for tea and coffees in the morning, for bottles, for barbs, for water for the dog, showers, um, toilets if you have a toilet on board, even if it's just a portable toilet. Water you go through a lot faster than you think you're going to. So either having the storage on board to carry a lot of water or doing a little bit of research into the location that you're going to so that you know that you can refill your water is going to be a massive, massive thing. Um, same goes for fuel. Certain places in Australia, out back and up north and stuff like that, fuel can get quite expensive. And they're not going to, they can get sections, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> They can also get sections in the road um, where you might have three, 400 Ks between fuel stations and the ones that are on either side are going to be the most expensive. So I carry an extra 60 litres worth of fuel on board so that I can make it from the fuel station just before that and the fuel station just after that so that I'm not paying absolutely through the roof mm -hmm. for just standard basic fuel. We don't have a diesel, it's a V6 petrol car so it drinks a little bit of fuel when we're towing. <laughs> I know it's insane. Um, but yeah, being able to store water and fuel consistently and having your refill points for either two are gonna be a massive thing as far as how far you travel and where you travel. Um, but that comes down to a little bit more on how to actually travel and plan your trips, which we'll get into a little bit later. There you go. So food storage would be another one. Now just bear with me while I try to explain this to you. As you probably know from some of our other videos, I struggle to talk. So keeping your food, keeping your food fresh would depend on what sort of setup you have. What we run is a Waco 50 litre fridge freezer setup, which we alternate between the caravan and the truck depending on if we're doing a day trip or if we're camping somewhere. 
but if you're going to go more traditional <laughs> routes and just purchase a van, um, you're most likely not going to have that set up unless you convert it yourself. So I highly recommend getting a Waco fridge or a Dometic fridge, depending on how much storage space you have in your van. So the other thing would be closed storage. Now, if you're planning on living full time on the road like we are, prepare to pack for all four seasons. As well as packing for your clothes for all four seasons, you've got to account to all your leisure activities as well. So whether or not you like fishing or free diving or sports or whatever it is that you like to do on those beautiful sunny days, you've got to pack them as well if you're planning on living on, living on the road full time. Now for those not so sunny days, you've got to account for them as well. Whether or not it's board games or deck of cards or something like that, portable DVD player, whatever you'd like. If you're living on the road full time, you've got to account for all of these things. Now, even though 90% of what we have in the caravan is to cater for the baby, so she's got a whole bunch of toys and her play mats, if you've got a family, you've got to account for that extra space with all the toys and everything that you take as well. We've got a whole drawer full of them. We've got balls for the dogs. Everything that you need in an everyday life, you've got to take a board if you're planning on living on the road. And the biggest thing when it comes to storage, taking all those things to into account, is no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be able to fit your entire household worth of goods into whatever setup you bring to the road, whether it's a huge RV or a massive caravan or just your standard van that you convert into a camper or a camper van, no matter what it is, you're not going to fit all that stuff into it. So minimalizing and cutting things out is probably going to be the hardest thing that you do. Figuring out exactly what it is that you want to take compared to what it is you can fit is going to be the hardest transition that you do. But I think when it comes down to it, the biggest thing you've got to do to start van life is start van life. It's just like moving from one house to another. Um, as soon as you pack one house up to move into another one, you throw half of the stuff away. It's the same thing, only you're going to be throwing three quarters of the stuff away. Um, but you just got to commit to it and do it and the rewards are going to be absolutely worth it, I can tell you that much for sure. Um, there was a lot of stuff that we thought we needed when we started van life that we brought and we've now gotten rid of. There's been a lot of stuff we didn't think we were going to need that we ended up going and getting. Um, so learning along the way is going to be the easiest thing to do. The best thing that you can do now is to just start it. If you're here watching these sorts of videos about how to start van life and how to get on the road and what you need and what you don't need, how much does van life cost and stuff like that, um, you're already halfway there. All you've got to do is start and then go from there. That's all we did. So one of the other main questions we get guys is how do we plan our trips? Because we do travel and live on the road with a dog and a baby, we've been asked a lot how do we plan ahead because of all the restrictions involved. So obviously the main restriction we have is the dog and people and places being dog friendly. We use wiki camps as far as organising where we're going to stay. Um, we camp 99% of the time at free camps on wiki camps and we just put the filter in there to make sure that the place is dog friendly before we get there. We don't plan super far ahead either. We're pretty flexible with what we do. We basically find a location that we want to go to that's worth filming for you guys and then find a camp that's around that area that's dog friendly. And 95% of the places that we go to, we can take the dog. We've only had um, one other video out there, which was up in Bundaberg at the zoo. If you guys have already seen it, if not, jump back and check out that Bundaberg video. Um, and she just chilled out the front in the car in the shade, not in the car, she's out the front of the car in the shade. And the zoo was just a 15 minute walk around that we did. Um, if we do go places where we can't take the dog with us, we'll go in the afternoon so that we can take her for a walk. Being a Kelpie, she needs a heap of exercise. A lot of that stuff is super fun for us to do, but it doesn't make very good content for you guys to watch. So not a lot of the stuff that we do with the dog you get to see. It's all behind the scenes sort of stuff anyway. It brings me on to our next restriction is that we've got a baby, obviously. <laughs> obviously we can take the baby everywhere that we go, but it does restrict our travel quite a bit because we can only drive so far in a day before Mia's just over it and she's tired and she doesn't like it, she wants to get out of the car and get out and about. Um, so we've got a time when we drive. So we drive fairly super early in the morning when she's just woken up so she's all happy and then when we stop for the dog to go to the toilet and things like that is usually when we get Bubsy out of the car and go for a walk and exercise the dog and stuff like that and that tires both of them out for them to sleep for the next leg of the drive. So a lot of the places we do go as well behind the scenes, we post on our Facebook and Instagram the locations that we go to that don't make the final video at the end of the week. So make sure you like us on Facebook and Instagram to see those behind the scenes locations. Yeah, a lot of the places we go to are awesome places um, and we just can't get a full video out of it for YouTube. Definitely recommend jumping onto the Facebook and our Instagram account. We'll put them in the description below for you guys to check them out because there's a lot of extra photos and videos and stuff like that. Um, they're awesome locations, we just can't get a full video out of them. But definitely recommend checking it out because there's some cool content on there. In saying that guys, there's a lot of stuff that we have to think about and organise before we do trips that aren't going to affect you if you go out and do a day trip or a weekend or even if you jump on the road full time as van life. 
Um, a lot of things we've got to think about is stuff like internet reception so that we can edit and upload the videos that we do. Um, but as far as just being on the road and van lifing 24 seven and organizing that and how we plan our trips, it's pretty basic. We just find locations that we want to go to that we think we're going to enjoy and make sure there's somewhere for us to stay when we get there. So I guess a bit of a recap is we use wiki camps for 99% of the stuff that we do. Um, they've got a lot of free camps on there and a heap of filters. So if you guys want to have fires, toilets, showers, a swimming hole, a walking track, dog friendly like we do, they're all filters that you can put in there. It doesn't just have the free camp sites, it also has a bunch of other caravan sites, um, homesteads, out the back of pubs and stuff like that. There's a heap of things on there, really good app, super cheap to download. It's free to download, I think it's like $7? Seven bucks, yeah. Seven dollars like that, um, after you do your free trial, but it, it paid for itself because the amount of free camps we've got out of that is just awesome. So yeah guys, like I said at the start, a bit of a different video for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope we answered some of the questions that you guys had. And if you can take anything away from this video, get out there and explore Australia. See what's out there. It's super easy. You don't have to jump on the road full time like we did. You just jump out there for a weekend and check out what you can find. Some awesome places out there. <laughs> Mia likes it, apparently. So as always guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next week. Okay guys, one thing we did forget to mention, if there's any questions that you guys have that we didn't answer in the video, or if there's anything that we spoke about in the video that you want a little bit more information on, feel free to hit us up in the comments below. Um, we're more than happy to answer any questions you guys have and make some more Q&A videos like this for you if you've got anything that you want answered. As always guys, appreciate your support. Love and life on the road. If you guys do get out there, feel free to hit us up. Never know, we might be in the same location. We can catch up for a beer around a campfire and exchange locations. See you out there, guys.